Hey guys, Chad Trofkerbin here from the Incredible Tutorials YouTube channel. Jim Mills and I have teamed up with Smith Micro to bring you these brand new Anime Studio 10 tutorials. So I hope you're ready, because we're about to get started. The Actions panel in Anime Studio Pro allows us to create actions for our characters and objects. From there, we can reuse the actions, overlap them, or edit them at any time. This is useful if we want to create actions and use them later in our project file. So to get started, I have created a character, which is a bone layer. So I have bones attached to this character. And now I can go up to Window, Actions. Here a new panel is displayed. And you currently have one item on the panel, and that is Main Timeline or mainline. Above that, you have some tabs, all, regular, morphs, and smart bones. The all tab will display all actions you have created. The regular tab will display all regular actions. The morphs will display morph actions. And the smart bones tab will display the new smart bone actions that you can create in Anime Studio 9, where you can adjust the bones and fix them and save them as actions. So the first thing we want to do right now is create a new action. So let's go to new action. And now we can name the action. In this case, I'll name it arms because I'm going to affect the arms for this action and click OK. Now you'll notice right when I do this, the arms item is added to the panel, but at the same time, a red arrow is now pointing to it. That means I am editing the arms action. At the same time, you'll also notice that my timeline has changed color, again indicating that I am not on the main timeline, but in fact in the arms action. So now, while we are in the arms action, and make sure of course that your character layer is selected, the bone layer, we'll come over here now to the manipulate bones tool. And starting right here, I will bring this arm forward and then this arm backward. I can advance forward a few frames to let's say about frame 12. I'll bring this arm forward, this arm backward, and then go to frame 24. And then I'll bring this arm forward, this arm backward, and I'm just going to check here really quick. I can bring this forward just a little bit more. That'll work. So now, if we play this, you can see we have our arms moving back and forth. It's nothing too spectacular, but that is the action. You'll also notice when I play this that the arms loop just on the keyframes I have created. So now, let's double click to go back to the main timeline. So just click on or double click on main line. You'll know when this is selected when the red arrow is pointing to it. Now I can advance forward one frame on my main timeline, click on the arms action just once so that it's just highlighted, not selected, and then choose insert reference. You can see when I do this, my timeline changes so that I have the arms action on it. It's labeled as arms and we have a red rectangle that represents how long the action takes place. If I click play on this, we can see that the action plays up to frame 24. So now we can combine actions as well. So once again, let's go back to frame zero and then click on new action. From here, I can name this legs since I'll be manipulating the legs and click OK. Now that I'm in the legs action, I can take my manipulate bones tool and starting with this leg, I'll move it back. And then this one I can move forward, advance forward to about frame 12, put this one forward and this one back. Go to frame 24, forward and back. And if I just look here, I 
can probably put this one down a little bit. Like that. And that will work. Okay, now go back to your main timeline by double clicking. And now go to frame one, click on the legs, and choose insert reference. You can see now a second bone layer or channel has been created on the timeline. We have arms and legs. And if we play this, we can see them both playing out separately. Not only can we combine multiple actions, but we can essentially loop these actions as well. I am currently on frame 24. If I advance now to frame 25, come up here to my panel and choose arms and click insert reference, you can see now that we can continue to pretty much loop this animation with the arms. And I can do this now a few more times. So after each action, I'll just insert a reference up until about frame 96. I can do the same now for the legs. So I'll go to frame 25 and insert reference for legs and just keep doing this. And now you can see, of course, I have multiple instances of these actions. Come back here and I can play this out and we can see how that looks. So now, if you have actions that you've combined that you like, we can now go back to, let's say, frame one, grab our transform tool. I can just nudge this back and then move the character, let's say, forward at frame 96. So move him like that. Go back to frame one and play this out. We can see that he moves across the screen. So along with the actions, you can combine your other usual channel actions as well. One more thing I would like to point out. Let's say at any point in your animation, you want to change the way the legs or arms action looks. If you go back into that action and make the changes, those changes will be applied to all instances where you place the action on the timeline. So that's just something to keep in mind when you are working on your animation and actions. And this is just a very basic example of actions. You can combine many more actions to create some very robust looking character animations. So play around with it, and I'm sure you'll come to find that this panel can be very useful. Anyway, that wraps up this lesson. If you have any more questions regarding Anime Studio, please visit the official Anime Studio website at anime.smithmicro.com. Thanks for watching, guys. I have more Anime Studio 9 tutorials out there, so check them out, and I'll see you next time.